Hello and welcome to Decentralized Health Administration at the Eureka Channel. We bring you critical technical knowledge about creating perfect conditions for much needed revolution in health industry. Under these new conditions, universal health access will be possible. Everyone in the world, including you and your loved ones, will have access to the best health services available. Health for everyone will be of the highest quality there is in the world and will be affordable by all. Isn't that good? My name is Dr. Masharia Waringi. I come to you from Ubrika Project located at 1.4 degrees south of the equator and 37 degrees east of the central meridian. That's marked right in the southwest suburb of Nairobi. What do we have today? Today we have great things to discuss. We want to discuss about mushroom, mushroom for Ubrican chapter. That is mushroom, let's see about mushroom for Ubrican chapter to create a sustainable One Health community. As you know, last Friday we visited uh, Patrick Kanye at the mushroom, the mushroom guru at the JQuad S, that is uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology Enterprises Limited Science and Technology Park, that's at JQuad. And Patrick had a lot to share with us. Mushroom can be a great business for a chapter. Take a listen. Yes. Then again, we'd like to discuss a little bit about the Nairobi Blockchain Conference. You know, it's coming on 27th, 27th September. And this conference is prepared by the blockchain team, Ubrika blo blockchain team, including David Kehuna, Jordan Mudemba, aka Jordan Type, Peter Kabi, aka St. Peter the Rock, Dennis Ogeto, aka the headmaster, and Kelvin Kamedi, Kelvo Francis Jigona, aka the father. And of course, the material about mushrooms also are this uh, accepted from decentralized health administration textbook under development by Susan Yabura Jigona in Ubrika Research and Development Team, including Naomi Nedododo, Winfred Mule, Abed Ndiani. And Mashari and Frida Butale. And also from proceedings of the World Ubrican Ambassador Program team, including Purity Mudoa, Winfred Mule, Waheto Washira, Grace Gishura, Bete Wajiro Washira, Naomi Nyedo Thotho, and Mashari, Frida Butale, Barbara Kimani, and Abed Ndiyani. Thank you so much for watching today. Uh, we're coming live from Nairobi, and that is let's say, in the afternoon. This hour, but before we go in deep to what we want to discuss, let's first of all revisit the basics. Very important we revisit the basics, lest we very important we revisit the basics, lest we get lost in the bush. No beating about the bush here. We know exactly what we want. So we know that you break a project stoves to bring solutions to three fundamental problems of health service, health production in the world. One is lack of access to the health services, and the other is poor quality of medical services. And the, one, the, the last one is high cost of medical services in most of the world. One, lack of access to health services occurs when people do not have money to go to hospital. Lack of access also occurs where no hospitals go to. Poor quality of medical services occurs when good knowledge to deal with medical problems is scarce. And high cost of medical services in most of the world occur when manufacturing of products can, that can be used to improve health is stifled. We solve the problem of lack of access due to lack of money by creating Sokojanja.com and an online retail store where you can sell what you have produced to increase your earning power. Money in your pocket means realized access to health. Ubrica clinics and hospitals projects ensure physical access to health services. Ubrica science and technology parks create places for translation and commercialization of new and relevant knowledge, ensuring best quality of medical services in the world. Ubrica Biomedical Industrial City promotes local manufacturing of biomedical products and reducing cost of medicines and medical devices and health services in general, making health affordable. Ubricoin, UBN, the cryptocurrency for universal health access, and rights health production in the Ubrica ecosystem. You can support universal health access by getting and adding Ubricoin to your portfolio of cryptos or by getting equity in, in the Ubrica project. Get involved. Do not sit on the sidelines of health. Buy and hold at least uh, $10 worth of UBN each and every day. You'll be supporting the most important and biggest grassroots evolution for creating health for everyone in the world. You can get even more involved by joining World Ubrica Ambassador Program, where you gain deeper knowledge about Ubrica Project and continually share that knowledge with people in your circle of influence. As an ambassador, you will be the bridge between Ubrica and Ubrica Soko Janja and people in the world. To increase your knowledge on blockchain and cryptocurrencies in health, Take course at the Academy of Cooperative Society of Ubricans for inquiries on how to enroll for courses right to info at ubrica.com. Get involved right away. Hit the like button to cement your support. Hit the bell button too so that you can subscribe 
to receiving a notifications, participate in the chat. Share your views on how to decentralize knowledge in health and medicine. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us today. Today we're going to speak about mushroom for ubiquitous, the ubiquitous chapter, and uh, mushroom for ubiquitous chapter. So mushroom can help you as a chapter build a sustainable one health community. So the point the the point we are facing today is that ubiquitous chapter can grow mushrooms to activate the fourth element of health production for themselves. Cultivated mushrooms are edible fungi that grow on decaying organic matter known as substrate. Unlike vegetables, they do not rely on sunlight to grow. Again, mushrooms do not rely on sunlight to grow. It's not that we don't have sunlight here in Africa. <laughs> in fact, we have more sunlight than we need. But they don't, mushrooms do not rely on sunlight. And therefore, they don't have to be outside. Mushrooms also do not rely on downpours of rain. So it's not like cultivating corn or wheat or something like that. Mushrooms start as very, very small spores. Reproductive structures very much tiny seeds in fungi. The spores will grow in, in the substrate. And I'm, I'm going to explain to you what is a substrate as we go along. The spores are going, will grow into the substrate to produce a network of fine white filaments called mycelium. And the portion, this, this portion of mushroom is what, is what goes at the ground, mycelium. They're like roots, but they're not roots. So, and from mycelium, the mushroom fruit is produced, I would say. The fruit is the part that is harvested. And um, mushrooms have high nutritional value. They're high in protein. They're also good source of vitamin, vitamins like B complex and vitamin C, essential amino acids and carbohydrates. But they are low on fat and fiber and contain no starch whatsoever. Can you imagine? Zero starch and of course, zero fat. When fresh, they have very high water content of about 90%. Minerals present in um, include phosphorus, potassium, iron, calcium, zinc, and copper. They're an ideal diet for diabetics and weight watchers. Some species are grown for medicinal value. Can you imagine? This is what we learned uh, with uh, Patrick over there at the J Quad S. Now, Mushrooms are valuable source of food and their cultivation can be viable, can be a viable small scale business for your chapter. But investing in mushroom growing scheme can be risky. Uh, so you need to do a feasibility study, looking at potential markets and supply chains. We're gonna explain to you all that. A general understanding of mushroom growing should be obtained through training or training to ensure the best chance of success. Some expert assistance will help. Now, chapter should, chapters should arrange to get training in mushroom production with Patrick Kanye at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology Enterprises Limited. We're going to give you the contacts for that gentleman so that you can know what to do. Don't, don't start growing mushroom of your own without training. Members of a Eureka chapter should collaborate in setup costs, production costs, harvesting, and marketing. Work closely with, with JQuart as they will assist you with linking to market outlets and training. Most popular mushroom species in Kenya are the button known as agriculture, agricus species, agricus SPP, and plurotus species. Agricus species, they're called the button mushrooms. Button mushrooms, they're widely cultivated by large scale farmers. Yes, their cultivation requires some high tech input. Oyster mushrooms, which are pleurot pleurotus, pleurotus species, are mostly grown on small scale farmers using simple production techniques. Now, before you start growing mushroom as a chapter, you should consider the following potential markets and supply chains. This is why I'm saying if you decide after this video that you want to grow mushroom for your chapter, and you know, mushroom is a very highly lucrative business, so a chapter can do it very easily, it doesn't require a lot of input. But before you start growing, first of all, go to JQuart. If you don't know how, call 0755-844-017. We'll direct you and connect you with. But it's very important that you gather together in your chapter of at least you know, 100 people, and then you keep on growing. You can start small, a chapter of 10 to 20 people. That's fine. But then you need to grow your chapter to 1,000 people so you can qualify for your CC. 
but let's start where you are. If you have a group already that is formed, it's ready to go. Then, first of all, let us hook you up with jQuart, and then you start learning. There, we'll speak uh, with uh, Patrick Kanye so that he can take you through the training of beginner. But then you need to learn the potential markets. There's a huge market for mushroom in Kenya. But if you don't know where it is, it doesn't matter. Don't start planting mushroom because it's very, very, very technical um, plant. And if you, you have to go to JQuad, learn the potential market and supply chain, find the source of high quality spawns that is seeds of mushrooms, and you find the spawns right there in JQuad, fight about the availability of substra substrate, that's material on which mushrooms grow. We we'll discuss a little bit more about um, substrate and how you can obtain it. It's very easy in Kenya where we have a lot of refuse and we have a lot of, you know, hay, straw, stuff like that, sawdust, coffee waste. And availability of supplements, that's additional nutrients that you put on the substrates, things like chicken poop, <laughs> chicken manure, that's what say, of course. Um, it's fertilized, everything that contains nitrogen, high nitrogen content and ammonia. And then the production plan to, to ensure continuous production. Say this continuous production, you don't want your chapter to start producing. They have the first harvest and then they're out of it, okay? You want to have a very good plan. Now you'll be taught all these things at JQuad. So market and marketing. When considering producing mushrooms as a business, check on the following about the market. Type, and this uh, you want to check this thing, I'll put on a checklist. The type and amount of demand by market outlets in Kenya, say your chapter is in Kenya, or wherever you are in your country. Check the price and, and availability. Check the current distributors and possi possibility of business relationships. Distributors, now we want to cut out the middleman, so I think if you go, if you form a chapter and uh, now you are JQuad, it's possible to get connected to a distributor. Uh, and possibility of value addition. Yeah, like you can dry the mushrooms and then you grate them into powder, particularly the medicinal type. The powder is very lucrative. Chapter members, we advise chapter members to identify where you can sell your mushroom, especially to the nearest market before starting production. Before starting production, all right? Before starting production, that's what it is. So let's go to your production plan. What is your production plan? As chapter members, you must plan your production in such a way that you produce only the amount that you're able to sell. You know, you can divide your production units into four sections such that each section has mushrooms at different growth stages at any one time. This will maintain a consistent supply to the market. For example, if you're 12 members in a chapter, then every three members are doing one stage. And there's following. That's the stages are as follows. The planting, you spawn, yeah, spawn. It is spawn. It is a plant, the spawn is a planting material that is equivalent to the seed uh, for, for starting mushroom cultures. Spawn is made from mycelia, that's plural of mycelium, uh, of mushroom grown on a carrier such as grains and it's produced in specialized laboratory at a sterile conditions. So don't try to produce your own mushroom seeds. Buy the mushroom seeds from JQuat. JQuat is, let's go say buy them from Mr. Patrick Kanye. The amount of spawn needed is equal to four to 6% of wet weight of the substrate. For example, if the wet weight is 50 kg, you, you need two to three kilos of spawn. One kg of spawn may cost between 600 and 800 Kenya shillings, okay? That's about six to $8. So JQuad produces high quality spawns. Chapter members who need spawn for or training should uh, contact the university and they, they, con they contact the business manager at JQuad Enterprises Limited, PO Box 62000 00200 Nairobi, or just call a mobile phone 0722-72881 and ask for Patrick Kanye. 0722-728-812-0722-728-812, ask for Patrick Kanye. Now, you can also call the Eureka office, 0755-844017, 0755-844017, 0755-844017, 0755-844017, 
0755844017 or write at in to info at ubrica.com and say that your chapter is interested in learning about mushroom and mushroom business. Then we'll hook you up with Mr. Patrick Kanye at Jquad Enterprises. Mm -hmm. Substrate, let's speak about substrate. Substrate is an organic based material on which mushrooms grow. A good substrate could be rich in, should be rich in nutrients, have good aeration and water holding capacity. Substrates commonly used in mushroom production include agricultural byproducts such as cereal straw, that is wheat, barley, rice, and corn. Wheat, barley, rice, rice and corn, cotton waste, maize combs, coffee husks and pulp, sawdust, sugar buggers, water hyacinth, among others. Now, growing mushroom on substrate of water hyacinth was first promoted by Chinese University of Hong Kong and um, has been taken up by African University of Mutare in Zimbabwe. The advantage of using water hyacinth, which is an unwanted weed that clogs up waterways. We know we have here water in Naivasha. We have a lot of hyacinth. So if you're in a Russia area, you have a lot of substrate. Or in Kisumu, we have Lake Victoria full of hyacinth. So if you're in Lake Victoria as well, all you do is go get the hyacinth and you make substrate that continues for. Because substrate is free, it's available, just go get, get it, uh, what hyacinth, and then you can produce fantastic mushrooms. Okay, but it's not being used here in Africa because uh, much of the discussions we had at JQuart uh, was talking about, we had about Rice, rice straw and wheat straw and mainly that barley. But hyacinth wasn't mentioned much, but uh, I'm sure that uh, even because we don't have hyacinth up here in, in Juja, but Kisumu is a lot of hyacinth, Naivasha is a lot of hyacinth. So you have very good substrate there for growing your mushrooms, okay? Now, however, cereal straws, you know, like wheat straw and uh, rice straw, they're usually the best because they are rich in nutrients that mushrooms require and facilitate quick colonization. The formation of, or that is colonization formation of white mass of mushroom mycelium of the substrate. Gypsum. Gypsum is useful ingredient to be added to the substrate. It provides calcium to, um, I think gypsum, calcium hydroxide. Uh, it provides calcium to the, the growing mushroom. It regulates acidity level of the substrate, counters, potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus concentration and increases water boiling capacity. So it counters potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus concentration. And of course, the most important thing is pH. Um, thus, it decreases the risk of overweighting. It also improves the physical structure of the substrate. You know, calcium is kind of structural. It's like calcium comes from bone and stuff like that. So it improves this, the physical structure of the substrate. Now, lime may also be added. You could add lime to to adjust the pH level. Um, it should be noted that different species of mushrooms will require different substrate mixes. The substrate might not be rotted. It must not, don't, don't let it rot. Ma substrate must not be rotten, moldy, and should be kept dry while in storage, okay? Now supplements. Supplements are materials added to the final mix of the substrate. Uh, to increase nitrogen content in order to improve the yields. Commonly used sub, sub, supplements include urea, bran, cotton seed cake, sunflower seed cake, molasses, broiler chicken manure, and horse manure among others. We don't have horses, too many people, people with horses around here, but stuff like urea, urea, maybe urea you may have to buy, but you can also add ammonia, but chicken manure, chicken, broiler chicken manure, very rich in urea. And horse manure, also very rich in urea. And ammonia. I don't know why my side is appearing. <laughs> so, um, it should be noted that heavy supplementation may increase risk of contamination by other microorganisms, which are likely to benefit from extra nutrients added to the substrate. <coughs> so that's about... The supplements. What about the mushroom house? This is a good thing. It's the most delicious thing about the, the, the mushroom. You don't need acres of land. You need to just build a mud house. Mud, Yamatope. Mud house, like the one you found in African village. 
before we moved into such houses constructed with stone. So the house of mushroom can be made of stone, of course, made of simple materials like mud and rafters, rafters, beetle. <laughs> so made with ma ma very, very lightweight, no, no, nothing sophisticated. And you, you can Google for an image of mushroom house. And you should also, you can use bricks. Yeah, you know, like terracotta soil. Yeah, like burnt bricks. You know, that's, that's a, it's, it's very easy to construct. Yeah. So this is something that the chapters can do very easily. Just Google mud house, mushroom house, which you can, you, you can roof with thatch, thatched, uh, what do you call it? Touch the grass and it does very well, straws. It does very, very well. So it should not be sited near a dumping site because dump, dumping site, you get contamination from things that are growing. Don't build it near a livestock pen so that you can reduce the risk of insect infestation and diseases. Because you could have flies coming out of the livestock pen or dumping site and then they fly into your mushroom and of course, they bring some foreign bacteria, fungi, which are other mushrooms that are probably poisonous. So the the mushroom house should be built at a shade. You know, like put it between trees that are shading an area. You can build your nice small mushroom house right there. And the house can be made from locally available materials. That's it. So you don't need to go uh, to buy stones, I don't know where, uh, or, or to buy um, roofing material. It is just from such grass that you cut from the neighborhood, all right? So the house can be made from local materials and the main aim is to maintain cool temperatures and high humidity. Now, such a house should be made of mud or bricks. A small scale farmer scenario, like if you're a group, you decide to do a small scale, a grass thatch mud walled house is most ideal. The house should have air vents or small windows on on the upper walls for ventilation and um, required light during fru fruiting fruition. Now, you remember that we said mushrooms don't require a lot of light, but you need a very tiny amount of light during fruiting. And the vents on the door should have insect insect screens and should be closed. Okay, so that you go, don't get insects flying in. If the temperature inside uh, the house is high, spray the water on the floor using a knapsack, this a knapsack sprayer, and then we find nozzles and vents, and the doors should be open at night. That is if the temperature inside is high. Wooden shelf for holding bags or wooden racks for hanging spawns or substrate tubes should be constructed at the height of about 1.5 meters from the ground, one meter for ease of working. So. If you're from the ground here is 1.5, then one meter, then one meter, then one meter. And so you can have them in stacks like that. So we see the chapters instead intending to start mushroom production as a business. I was, we strongly advise them to undertake hands-on training, again, hands-on training down there at Jaquat. Um, and that will be very, 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 very important. So what are the, the phase of cultivation of button and oyster mushroom? So phase one involves substrate preparation. For oyster mushrooms, uh, it takes six to eight hours soaking shredded straw in water for oyster. Pre-wetting of wheat straw for button for three days for the button. You can see the button is like a slay queen, wants a lot of attention, okay? A selection of a substrate. Cereal straws are preferred, wheat straw is ideal for button. In case of oyster, it involves shredding, soaking it in water for to moisture up 70% content. Then you drain the excess water, adding supplements plus lime and packing it into polybags. Simple, straightforward. So oyster is very, very simple to prepare. Then you can compost. Compost for oyster. For oyster doesn't require composting, okay? Substrate for oyster is ready just by adding some water to the straw, to about 70%. So... Uh, Composting, you compost for the button for 18 to 20 days. This involves pre-wetting of the wheat straw uh, up to 70% moisture. And then you add supplement plus lime and gypsum. Then 
then it composes to, to dark brown and the moisture has to remain there at um, 6.7, a uh, 70% moisture and the pH is about 8 to 8.5, slightly alkaline, okay? Oh, pasteurization and conditioning. Pasteurization means that um, you kill the germs by four to six hours of steam heating at, um, at, at what? Oh, I can't see anymore. <laughs> it's so bright out here, outside, so much sunlight. So four to six hours of steam heating at four to six degrees centigrade for oyster, four to six degrees centigrade, and then cool the polythene bags to 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. For button, steam heat for eight hours. You can see button is still very exacting. It requires a lot more work than, than oyster. And so uh, then you lower the temperature for four, four to five days at 45 to 50 degrees centigrade, and then cool to 20 to 25 degrees. Now, steam heating of oyster polybags is done with water drums, and it can also be done in hot water at boiling point for one hour. So you really need to learn these things so that you don't get contamination. Button steaming is done in special chambers. We have special chambers with tunnels and conditioning is to remove ammonia gas, which is poisonous to for button. See, you really have to be careful with this button. So for beginners, I would suggest that you go for the oyster. Cooling is in preparation for spawning and the moisture content of substrate then should be 67 to 70%. Here are all these details. Uh, you want to go to JQuart and learn them. Spawning and incubation. Uh, three to, three to ten, five to 10 days incubation for oyster, 15 days for butter. See, applying, uh, applying um, spawn to substrate in poly, polythene bags, grow, the growing room should be kept humid. Uh, that's room, room humidity of 65 to 95%. With the dim lighting just sufficient to read a newspaper. <laughs> just sufficient to read a newspaper. That is mean that means that if your vision is really good. Okay. Now sterilize oh, casing. Casing. Now sterilize sterilize casing soil for about you know, once you have um you, you have you have done what? you have you have pasteurized the uh the whatever and then the incubation polybags then you want to take the soil and sterilize it for four hours at 60 degrees casing run is then you you run the casing for 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 four to 15 days 14 to 15 days <clears throat> for oyster you don't need that for oyster casing is not applicable casing is is, is applying a thin layer of red topsoil added with maram and lime on top of fully colonized substrate. Casing soil should be kept wet but not waterlogged. Substrate turns white and grayish due to color of mycelium. You see, we are, we are learning here that uh, the, the button is a little bit more exacting, requires a little bit more work, but if you can grow them, well, first of all, when you learn that, you don't, when you learn how to do it, then you don't find it very technical. That's why I'm insisting you have to go to JQuart and get the training from Patrick. Patrick is really good. Now, for, for oysters, uh, pin, the oysters begin pinning. Pinning is when they start shooting out. You can see the little mushrooms coming out. Uh, oysters begin pinning five to, to 10 days in a growing house, you know, at a temp at room temperature, 23 to 25 degrees. Button, on the other hand, seven to 10 days, but the growing house temp temperature will depend on, var on variety. Pinning is when the mycelia start is fruiting, forming very young mushrooms known as pinheads. It takes three to four days for the pinheads to develop until the, it mature mushrooms. Um, room humidity requires 85, uh, the humidity required is about 85 to 95%. Okay, that's really uh, mainly for the buttons. So if you find that the, the humidity is drying, you pour water, you come with a, a small uh, in a small gallon, and then you pour the water evenly on the floor. Of course, you can even pour water on the walls, okay? Harvesting. Oyster is harvested in about 30 days, 
Button can take up to 40 days from spawning to harvesting, okay? So oyster harvesting is done when the mushroom mushroom ear is up 7.5 to 10 centimeters long diameter, turgid and bright in color. Button is picked at the young stage before opening, before it can open this like an umbrella. So repeat the cycle seven to 10 days so you can harvest and see how it, it works. Now, how much th does it yield? On average, an average of 33 kilos of fresh button mushroom per square meter of substrate can be obtained, 33 kilograms. And you're hearing one kilogram is goes for about six to 800 shillings. So, and you are in good shape. Mushroom is good business. So in case of oyster mushroom, you depend on the type of substrate used. For example, wood straw would convert at 75 to 100%. That is 75 to 100 kilo fresh mushrooms are expected from 75 to 100 dried wheat straw. See, so wheat straw is really the best, but don't cry if you don't have wheat where you live. If you live in an area where there's coffee, you can use coffee husks and uh, all the other coffee waste that you get from the coffee factory. If you live in Kisumo, you have higher synth over there. But if you live in the Midwest, Kenya, Kitale, wherever, you are going to get a lot of wheat straw there. If you live in where you have rice, and it's really good. So post-harvest handling, how, how do you handle the mushrooms after you have uh, harvested? I would like to tell you that mushrooms are very perishable, and if possible, you should sell them the same day you harvest. At a cool condition, the shelf life is one to three days. Okay, yes. And so this one, this is also one thing you're going to learn, Jake, what, what do you do to add value to your mushrooms? Yeah, you, you can you can dry the mushrooms and, and grind them and you'll be having some maybe ground grinding machines. And next time we go to JQuat, we shall meet with Professor Kehato, who fabricates dryers, like fruit vegetable dryers. You can use to dry your mushroom. And also they make um, meals, flour meals, and where you can grind your your mushrooms into, into, into powder. Okay, surplus can be preserved by drying, canning, pickling. Now, pickling is to add some acid, you know, like ACV, apple cider vinegar, of vinegar itself. I don't know, but let's discuss that next week when we go back and ask how do you pickle mushrooms? Or you can grate them dry into powder for soups. So mushroom soup. We go to some rest restaurants in Nairobi, you can get mushroom soup, like you could get tomato soup. Delicious. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Again, this information, you find all this information from J Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture Technology Enterprises Limited, JQuat S. And if you want to learn more about it, please write uh, to us info at and or call uh, plus two five four seven five five Seven five five eight four four zero one seven, and that is it for today. I think that was a whole lot of things to listen, but I hope this information is helpful. We really would love to have chapters, you break chapters, particularly the ones that can access J quite easily. Call us on that number zero seven five five eight four four zero one seven, and we arrange how to, you can come to J quite and learn about mushroom because we'd like to see one chapter getting one or two chapters, even 10 chapters, beginning mushroom business right away. But don't begin mushroom business before, as we said, we look at the market, okay? Market, where to sell. And of course, together with uh, Patrick Kanye, who we'll help you through, and his team, Ajik, of course, remember, Lydia. Lydia is a technologist in the mushroom place, and that will be very, very helpful. Now, finally, back to the basics. Always remember, you break a project strives to solve three fundamental problems of health production, one is lack of access to health services. The other is poor quality of medical services and high cost of medical services in the world. Lack of access to health services occurs when people do not have money. Now, we are saying, let us join hands with JQuot S. Let the chapter learn how to grow mushroom for sale for market and the lack of money disappears, right? The problem of lack of money disappears. Then lack of access also occurs where no there are no hospitals to go to. Now we mushroom business, and people are getting wealthier, then what will happen? 
you have money, we put a URCC because we, they, they will consider the mushroom farming as the workshop for a URCC and then they qualify for clinic. And so this means a hospital comes close. So when it also occurs when good knowledge to deal with medical problems class. Now, we know that even mushrooms are medicinal. You know that now we begin to see good knowledge emerging by just that basic project. The mushroom project can even bring about good, good knowledge to deal with medical problem, problems. You know that mushroom is medicinal and it will get rid of so many diseases that we have because it is high in active oxidants, which means that it can prevent cancer. It can prevent heart disease. It can prevent um, all these medical problems that affect our people. And then, of course, um, they have the third problem is lack of the high cost of medical services, which occur when manufacturing of products that, that can be used to improve health and stifle. You see, when you learn this thing about mushroom, you see it's a manufacturing process, manufacturing medicinal uh, plants that are going to be around you. Thank you uh, for today. Thank you so much for watching and uh, always joining us every day. Right here, you break a channel. We really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so right away. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, or comments, please leave them at the comment section below. And we will respond to them. You, you can also contact us to our office by sending email info at call uh, plus two five four seven five five eight four four zero one seven. You also visit our website, ubrica.com, for more information about you break a project. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, uh, we're going to stop there. And uh, very, very grateful. Thank you. Uh, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.